So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. Well, y'all are out here in the garden with me this morning. And let me tell you something, it's starting to get hot. But I've been out here for, I know about an hour and a half is when I finally got out here. I meant to get out here earlier before it started getting hot. But you know, things just didn't work out. Plus, I've been in the high tunnel and I've been uh, getting rid of a, a bunch of of kale that uh, the bugs have gotten a hold of and I had I had planted a bunch of radishes in there so I went in there and pulled all them up that that just didn't quite make it because there were so many in there but it's getting so hot too that they're starting to to flower and bolt so they're not going to be growing anymore but I did get lots of radishes out of it so that was a good thing but I, I've been in there just doing what I needed to get done in there and uh because I'm fixing to, to fertilize and water everything from the high tunnel to out here in the kitchen garden, which is just off the back of my uh, outdoor kitchen. For y'all that's uh, never seen my outdoor kitchen or my kitchen garden. Um, so that's where I'm sitting right now. And right behind me is one side of the high tunnel. But uh, Mr. Brown, he's got the weed eater going out at the, the main garden. Uh, we do no till, so uh, we have to keep a lot of the, when it gets too tall, we try to trim it down. And what we have found with that is that uh, it does keep moisture in the ground. I know a lot of people say, well, it deletes a lot of nutrients too from your, from your plants when you've got uh, these different weeds and, and, and grasses growing up. But really and truly, where the tomatoes and the squash and the okra and the potatoes and the peppers and everything's planted, um, it is, we went down through there and, or Mr. Brown did, and he just, he dug it deep enough and wide enough rows that we went down through there for several years, or he did mainly, and um, he put compost, he's put, um, leaves he's put everything you can think of manure and that's how we built up to where we plant our plants but the rest of the garden usually it's no till now last year i had pumpkins out there and they just done wonderful what I have researched myself. Now, when I get on here and tell you anything about gardening, it is just years of experience and years of research because I'm 58 years old and been gardening all these years, but I still learn something every day, that's for sure. And we all do, I know. But my grandma and grandpa had a huge garden where I was raised for many years. And it was, oh, I don't even know the footage of the garden. I just remember it being huge. And, of course, Grandpa had a big old huge tiller. And we grew green beans and tomatoes and cabbage and uh, things like that. But he kept that thing so clean from weeds and um, any grass. I mean, it was just perfect. He didn't have the the uh, black garden uh, weed barrier. He, he didn't have that stuff that everybody uses now. He just kept it tilled. And uh, things did grow, and Grandma put up a lot of stuff. But from expert gardeners that 
have books out and stuff that I've researched. And it always makes sense to me too that you can go out in, in the desert and in, in the barren lands and where there's no grass growing, it's just open dirt, just the sun beating down on it and you can pick it up and you can, you know that there's just not much nutrient in that. Even though the grass and the weeds, the roots that are down in the ground are sucking up nutrients, still them leaves and that grass, the blades of the grass, the, the leaves, are still pulling in and still pulling in the nutrients that that ground needs not to deplete itself. If you have just bare ground after years, it's really going to deplete it, and not even years, it's going to deplete itself of any nutrients. But what I'm trying to get to is last year I planted pumpkins out there and they went crazy. I did not, we did not till it. We just let the grass grow around it. It got to the point that Danny couldn't even weed eat around the pumpkin plants because they were just so prolific. They just done so good. And I got several, several pumpkins out of it. And uh, it was just unreal to me. And uh, they done really well. My green beans, I was... I still had green beans growing in the fall um, out there. So everything just done good. So if you've got any kind of a garden or a garden bed that is just out in the sun constantly and no kind of, of, uh, of growth, anything, it's going to deplete itself in nutrients. That sun just absolutely sucks it up, but then you say, well, the sun's supposed to put nutrients in the ground. Well, you got to have, you got to have the greenery. You got to have the leaf. You got to have the blades of the grass that's going to suck that in, and then go to the root, and then go to the ground. Now, I'm sure I'm going to get some people to argue with me, and that's fine. <laughs> That's fine. You know, we all we all have the ways we do things and uh, what we research and what, you know, what does good for us. Do what does good for you in your space, in your climate, in your area. You find something that works, that grows you food, you do that. Um, because we just do what works for us here on this clay, rocky hill. And we're learning. You know, we moved from a big farm and uh, we had an established garden there then we moved to the river we had a cabin there and lived there for about three and a half years so the soil there was sandy okay we grew some of the pretty prettiest corn i'm talking 500 years uh, you know we was giving it away we had so much and it tasted so good so sweet but it wasn't that we just went out there and threw out corn now Mr. Brown and my youngest son, Tyler, who was at home at the time before he got married, they would go out there and they would pull that, that sandy dirt up around that corn as it grew. And they would go out there and they would do that. And then they would take the hose out there. Now, my cabin was about a 100 foot from the river. That's how close we was, the 11 Point River. And believe me, we absolutely loved it. But it's wasn't a place to raise a family, but people would come out there and stay. The Mennonites would come out there to our place and just enjoy themselves. It was so wonderful. But back to the story. And they would take a, a garden hose, and they would go out there, and they would flood that corn. Now, I don't remember if they'd done that every two weeks. Uh, Danny would have to tell you that, because I'm not sure. And they also fertilized it, because there was not a whole lot of nutrients in that ground, but the kind of ground it was, it was good enough for corn to really thrive in, but still you had to fertilize it too. So we just, now up here, we have no place to grow corn, not at this point. So, but we do have places that we can get it when it does come off. But, uh, that's just what I'm saying. Whatever works for you at your place, at your homestead, at your little urban city garden, 
you do what works for you because you know all ground all all places all climates are so different but today you hear that that's somebody's boom box and we live out in the woods <laughs> they drive by about once a day and that's what I hear I don't know if you can hear it booming I don't know what keeps them from being deaf for me to hear it out here I don't understand it <laughs> but anyways they'll know when they get our age and they can't hear much anymore they'll wish they didn't do that um, but today we got to get all this done what we're going to be doing today is fertilizing we've had quite a bit of rain oh we had a lot of rain and then it just stopped so it's been about a week since we've had any but when you get that much rain and rain and rain and it floods and rain and rain, it kind of depletes your, uh, your nutrients too. So you need to fertilize. <coughs> now I've got an airplane going over. <laughs> you just thought it was quiet out here in the middle of the woods. Um, my green beans are doing good and they're fixing to the bloom, but they're needing um, fertilize. So what we're gonna do, uh, people that's asked me, I use fish emulsion. To fertilize with. I'm going to show you how I mix it and how I use it and uh, I'll read to you how you you need to use it and uh, where fish emulsion even started and uh, I'm also going to have another video making my own fish emulsion because it has went up um, I think four or five dollars since last year. I usually try to buy it in a gallon, and I'll show it to you here in just a minute. But my green beans and uh, my cucumbers are doing good. I want to talk about that too because I, I companion planted my cucumbers with my green beans, and my cucumbers are just really doing good. Now I got a late start on them because of the cold weather, but uh, and I don't have them in full sun. So see, it's things that you learn through the years. Because they'll tell you, you know, such and such needs full sun to do any good. But what I found out on this hill, if I put my cucumbers in full sun, the plants just struggle so much. So I've got, I'm going to say they get about four hours of uh, sun, but not direct sun. And they are looking really good. But where you live could be different. I live in the hills of Arkansas, northeast Arkansas. Uh, my zone is 7b i believe so it's just different here it's even different if we have a frost we are about 600 i think our yeah i think it's 600 feet above um, sea level is what we are here and that's that's pretty good for here in my area Anywhere else, that's probably not much, but here in my area, it is. So anyways, let's get started with fertilizing. And I'm going to show you a lot of people want to know about the fish emulsion and how I mix it and how I use it. And uh, it's going to take a while because we'll be fertilizing everything from the kitchen garden to the front garden, which is mostly uh, flowers and roses and stuff like that uh, inside the high tunnel. I'll be fertilizing everything in there. And uh, then the big garden where he's at weed eating right now. His potatoes are looking really good. You'll see that. So let's get started mixing and talking about the fish emulsion. And the sun's changing. <laughs> I was in the shade for a while. But anyways, let's get started mixing our fertilizer. Okay, I'm trying to find some shade, y'all. I'm going to read a little bit about fish emulsion. Because I didn't know about fish emulsion all my life either. This is something I come into new. Uh, because all, you know, we grew up with was uh, chicken manure and cow manure and rabbit manure because we raised tame rabbits to eat and sell. And uh, so that was just our fertilizer. And it's good stuff, too. Uh, I find that fish emulsion is 
it is so good on green beans but the main thing is fish emulsion is so good for the getting your your leaves the foliage on your plants are so it just makes them so green and uh, it seems to help with things to bloom maybe not faster but better and uh, i've just always had really good luck with it uh, i never i've got little bugs flying around me i never had um any trouble i never burnt anything up using fish emulsion and i'll show you how you can mix it up and put it in a spray bottle too that way you can spray the you know at a certain time of day you can spray the foliage and stuff with it too and it just helps that that much better now the stuff don't smell good i can tell you that and especially when you make it homemade <laughs> you know how when you make your garden teas out of uh compost and stuff if you've ever done that and i'll show you how i do that for my high tunnel uh, after about a month it does not smell very good at all but anyways i'm sitting under this cherry tree and right back there the other day there's big old black snake so if i'm sitting here talking and y'all see another black snake come up behind me just holler at me please let's talk about fish emulsion it says using fish to fertilize well let's back up using fish for fertilizer it in a new concept native americans taught the settlers at jamestown how to catch and bury fish to use as fertilizer organic farmers across the globe use fish emulsion in place of toxic chemical fertilizers it gives a really good nitrogen boost too Making your own fish emulsion fertilizer may seem like a daunting task. However, the smell is worth it. <laughs> and this is something that we're going to be doing as soon as me and Mr. Brown get to go fishing and catch some fish so I can make me some fish emulsion. I never can remember everything. That's why I have to look at my notes. It says when to apply fish fertilizer. It is used as an all-purpose fertilizer and pr promotes lush growth. To use as a primary fertilizer, apply every three weeks during grow growing season. And when I first apply fish emulsion is when my tomatoes and my green beans and stuff uh, get about six inches high, the plants, I start using the fish emulsion on them. And like I said, you don't have to worry about it because it doesn't burn your plants up. Sometimes you can over fertilize with store bought chemical fertilizer and it'll burn your plant up, or you can, uh, you can burn it up with chicken manure if you don't use it right. Now, this is, and what I'm fixing to use today, and this is what it says fish emulsion is often used in combination with kelp. And that's what the last time I bought some online, and I buy it from Amazon, and you can buy it from Walmart. But the price has went up, y'all. Just gonna tell you that. And I do have the link down in my Amazon store for uh, fish emulsion. I think I have the gallon jug and the smaller one if y'all don't need a whole gallon. Uh, but they, it, the price has went up. So it's often used in combination with kelp. Now this is something that I didn't know that I'm going to start doing. It says alfalfa is one of the best organic amendments resulting in more vigorous growth and increases bloom production. So I haven't read the ingredients on this one I bought lately. It's fish emulsion and kelp. Make sure what all's in that one. And then my smaller bottle is nothing but... Uh, Let's see, I've got it right here. Boy, it does not smell good. But it's okay. Okay, the total nitrogen, when applied, one tablespoon Per gallon. Did I say that right? Yes, it's one tablespoon of fish emulsion to one gallon of water. And I knew that 
but a lot of times I kind of, I've done it so long, I know it ain't gonna burn it up, but I usually mix it up in a five gallon bucket. And I put about four tablespoons what I put in there. If things are really starting to look like the leaves are yellow and stuff, I'll put five tablespoons, so five gallon bucket of water. And that's probably what I'll do today. The total nitrogen is 5.0. Three point seven five percent water soluble nitrogen, point seventy five percent water insoluble nitrogen. The available phosphate is one point zero. Soluble potash is one point zero percent. Derived from fish solubles in phosphoric acid, point seven five percent is slowly available nitrogen from fish solubles. And this is great for indoor plants too. If you want to just mix up a quart, it's one teaspoon. Two teaspoons for your plants outside and for inside it's one teaspoon per quart. Fish has been used as a natural source of plant nutrients for centuries. It's a rich source of organic matter that breaks down and releases nutrients into the soil to enhance the strength of the vigor of your plants. Additionally, naturally occurring soil microbes thrive and work their best in rich, of course we know, in organic matter. So, this is what your, your bottle look like, whether this is your fish fertilizer. It's Alaska, that's what I use. There's different kinds of brand names out there. This one is, uh, you can get this in this size or gallon. And then I'm gonna show you the bottle of what I'll be using today. It's a uh, fish emulsion and kelp mixed together. And uh, it's really good stuff. So I'll show you that before I start mixing it up. So more or less, this is what I use in combination of just making my own uh, organic teas with, uh, I chop and drop a lot, which means I go out constantly and cutting things back, cutting uh, leaves off that's been uh, infested by insects or, uh, just anything that you would, you know, cut back or cut off your plant, it goes into a five gallon bucket. And uh, once it gets full, of course it's full of water and it just breaks down into a tea and it smells so bad, but it's so good for stuff. But a lot of y'all have been wanting to know about fish emulsion and exactly what we use. Now this is not all we use on the big garden or in here, but some of the other things we're fixing to show you is uh, stuff that we probably will put down maybe twice a year and it's put down before in the middle of growing season and then you know when you put stuff your soil to bed for the winter it'll be amended and then of course when for spring it's amended again so anyways that is pretty much, you know, talking about it. And then the next time we we'll probably talk about fish emulsion is when I show you how to make your own. That's gonna, it'll be even better and save you a lot of money. And it may come to the point that you can't even buy fish emulsion anymore. So anyways, let's get started mixing our fertilizer because I have got to get started getting it on my plants. Sorry I took so long. I just love sitting and talking to y'all, though. Like I said, this stuff does not smell good. Now, this is not the Alaska brand. This is what I had bought from Walmart that, well, it's been about a month ago. Um, because I was needing some. So, it's time. We've had so much rain. This is GS 
Planet Foods, High Performance Naturally Organic Liquid Fish and Kelp Blend. Now, I'm going to read the instructions on the back of this one. Of course, you need to shake it really good. Now, for your, your indoor plants, it says mix. Let me read all this to you. Mix two ounces of fish and kelp blend with one gallon of water. Use this on any plant material, trees, lawns, shrubs, and transplants, potted plants, indoor plants, vegetables, flowers, and seeds. You can apply spray until leaves are wet. Top and bottom is best to for your feet early or late in the day. Now, from what I've researched, it's better to do it really early in the day. Okay. Outdoor plants. Use a fourth of a cup per gallon of water. Now, you heard me say a while ago, one tablespoon per gallon. That's with the regular fish emulsion. Let me read this one. That was for my indoor plants and when I was starting my plants in the greenhouse and if they got up to about six inches, they were usually outside anyways. Yes, one tablespoon. One tablespoon of fish fertilizer. This one here is different. And I, I put a fourth a cup per gallon of water to feed my everything outside. And it's because everything at this point is already growing and already, uh, you know, really established and needing some nitrogen and some good fish emulsion and kelp. But whenever you buy this, read the directions on back. Do that. So a fourth a cup. And because this is a five gallon bucket, I put a whole cup and a fourth. I know how I mix it. I just don't want to. <laughs> I want it to read it to you though. So, usually I would probably just put a cup, but that's about a cup and a fourth to five gallons of water. And you see the color it turns. At this point, you can't really smell it, but when you go to putting it on your plants and, and watering everything and fertilizing, as you walk by your, <laughs> your garden or your bed, you're going to smell it. But the smell will be gone by the next day or so. So we're going to get busy fertilizing. I'll show you how we do that. Mr. Brown finally got done weed eating. No. No. I didn't realize you was filming. I wouldn't have been weed eating too close. <laughs> it, it didn't matter. The rooster's crowing. Earlier there was an airplane that went over. Then the boom box come by. So they, they've heard it all. Heard all we hear around here, huh? Even though we live out in the middle of the woods. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. 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 So we got to get stuff fertilized. I understand.
And I still have cauliflower trying to grow. So I'm just going to take and go around the bottom of the base and just give it a good soaking. And I won't let this cauliflower stay out here in this heat too much longer. Now this part of my garden, it doesn't, uh, it don't even get six hours of sun. And there's a cauliflower back here too. And there's one or two up there. And I'll do the same thing with them. I've got a few green beans that I just planted here at the end. I'll fertilize them. I've got a cabbage plant in there. I've got some broccoli plants I'm fixing to pull because they're done. But I am going to go ahead and fertilize the rest of my cauliflower that's coming on. And then these beans. And then I'll move on to the rest. And I have several cabbage plants that I've got planted in uh, what used to be cattle mineral. I'm just going to give it a good drink, too. My cabbage is kind of light coming off this year. Our weather was cold for a long time and rainy, but it kind of done that last year, too. We're going to go over here to the sweet potato bed that's not. It's just now starting to really grow. Y'all remember me planting this, but like I said, it's just now really starting to warm up, but they are starting to take off and grow now, and really and truly, these sweet potatoes have got a long growing period too, so it's not that big a deal that they're just not overtaking the bed yet because I won't even dig these up till fall. But even though it had really good amended soil in it, I'm gonna go ahead and it's it's been a good three weeks since I fertilized them, so. And I probably won't fertilize this bed again for Another three weeks to four weeks, probably. Okay, here is another bed of green beans. It's a raised bed, and it's just full of green beans. And back here, you'll see my cucumber. I got three, three cucumber plants. And so far, they are doing really good here with my contender green beans. Contenders are a bush bean, so I don't have to. Uh, but look here, it's wanting to climb. You know, that happened last year. I don't know what the deal is either, but I ended up having to put uh, some braces up, some uh, trellises, because what's supposed to have been bush beans ended up needing trellises. But anyways... My cucumbers are doing really good with the green beans. Now, you know that beans, green beans, put a lot of nitrogen into the soil. But also, back here, they're not getting that full blaring sun. So, they seem to be doing really good. So, we are giving this bed green beans that are starting to bloom. Some good fertilizer. And then as I turn around, see if I can turn y'all around, I've got more green beans right here in this bed. Now, if you see anything that has what looks like flower on anything, it's uh, DE because I'm starting to get um, 
stink bugs and squash bugs and everything. So DE does help. It doesn't cure it, but it does help. And soapy water and a spray bottle helps too. With a little bit of vegetable oil in it. So we got the green beans fertilized that were out here in the kitchen garden. But I have green beans out in the big garden too. We will wait till, wait till later this afternoon probably to work with all that because the sun's really starting to come out and uh, blare down on stuff. Okay, we're walking up here to a sawdust pile with dogs barking in the background. We ain't had the sawdust pile very long. We're gonna get a wheelbarrow full, put it around tomatoes and squash and stuff. Mr. Brown can kind of tell you about this pile of sawdust. You see how black a lot of it is? See how dark it is? A lot of it's broke down. This particular sawdust pile come from a pallet mill. And I'm guessing it's 20 years old. It might be 25 year old. This is some of the first. When they first started blowing it, they, it it's a huge pile. My brother got access to it. He's got a back hole and we bought a couple of loads. <clears throat> and he hauled some to one guy and he just took and threw some seed in it and it started growing. It's uh, it feels like dirt. It ain't yet, but it, it's some, it's broke down pretty good. You gotta be real careful. You can't put sawdust that's very green on a plant, it'll burn it up. It's got too much acid in it, wood acid. Uh, my brother has put some of this all over his garden already. We're gonna put some out here. I like how pretty it is. I mean, that's that's some good looking stuff. And that's just nothing but sawdust. Nothing but sawdust. Now, this sawdust was from a sawmill that... Pallet mill. Pallet mill. Now, there's no chemicals or anything in this. Nope. They bought sawmill run lumber. And uh, I used to haul lumber to them. Uh, they bought local lumber, uh, mostly oak, but uh, sometimes a little bit of everything. But this pile is huge. That pile is probably, I don't know, it's probably 100 yards both directions, not 100 yards, probably. Well, it could be. I know it's at least 50, 75 yards wide and long. It's big. But this is some of the very first stuff when they started. It's been sitting there for years. And this, this winter, I plan on making, when all the gardening's done, I'm gonna make me some big windrows in my rows and let it set all winter. We'll probably plant directly in it next year. That's probably right. that's probably enough for tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> Looks like pretty stuff though. I think it'll work. Get that shovel hand on the ground. Hit me in the belly. <laughs>
So all this hard work is worth it. Fried squash and broccoli and cauliflower out of the garden that you grew yourself. Well, this is the next day, and we're going to walk around here to the high tunnel because I want to show y'all um, what I got in this bed right here. It's just a bunch of tomatoes and oregano and leeks and stuff and flowers. But I want to show y'all the kale because this afternoon before dark, I will be harvesting this kale, which means I'll be trimming back the leaves and I'm going to have to uh, put it all up in the freezer. I'm going to blanch it and then uh, I'll put it in vacuum seal bags. Now, I have a video of canning greens and I absolutely love the taste of them canned greens. Now, this is what I'll be making my my tea, my tea fertilizer out of, I was talking about earlier, I'll fill that up with water and let it steep for about a month. But I'm going to be putting up kale tonight. I don't have time for canning it. And this is my granddaughter's little strawberry patch. It's looking good. Over here in this four-tier planner that my daughter-in-law gave me. I've just got some ivies and some thyme and some chives. That mailbox back there, you see it, it holds my uh, garden tools. And that is my sweet pea tower. And over here you can see this time of day is when that spot gets full sun. But I tell you, this is just one of my favorite things when I'm out in the garden working is to come over here to my, my pea tower and every once in a while just pick, a, pick one and snack on it. So fresh, so sweet. It's just the beauty of what the good Lord gives us. A sweet little pod full of sweet little peas, green peas. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. We'll be seeing y'all in a couple of days. I've got some zucchini and squash back here. I was just going to show y'all. But I got something going on this week, and I'll be letting y'all in on it, and there'll be a video on that. So y'all look forward to that. God bless everybody.